Well, I had made a prototype windmill back in the mid-70s, I guess it was, and made it out of balsa wood and, you know, little things, and put it up in this thing, put fan on it, and it worked wonderful. Set it aside. It's a, it's an interesting project. Well, that one came back. When I researched all the windmills we had, all of them I could find, none of them worked at low wind speeds. And the ones who worked at the upper wind speeds were questionable because of how often they had wind speeds uh, big enough to make them work. Example, these big uh, wind turbines and things of this nature. Do they work? Yes, under the right conditions. But given the overall process of it, uh, we won't make money off those. I think we make money off of them simply because the government subsidizes them with our money so that they can be profitable. Well, in looking, I could not find a windmill that would serve my purpose, one that would produce large amounts of energy at low air speeds. And there's a reason for it because the air density, the energy in the air density of air at those speeds is extremely low. It's just like the uh, energy density of uh, solar is extremely low. And so I was needing to tackle a problem that was going to be difficult at best. And yet, I knew nothing about wind as such other than being a pilot and some of the aspects of that which helped me in this. And uh, I went back to my old windmill that I had originally done and we have two axes of windmills. One's a, a horizontal axis windmill and those are looked like a propeller that you see on the end of an airplane and the uh, axle in the windmill is horizontal to the surface of the earth. So it's pointing straight out. Uh, those uh, typically are, are screw machines. Uh, I know they call them different things, but, but to the bottom line is they're a screw machine. Wind blows against them and it causes them to screw through the air. Same thing with airplane propeller. It's just screwing itself through the air as such and it causes them to turn. The efficiency of them isn't that great. I think there's something called a blitz standard or something, I don't know if I pronounced it right, of the maximum efficiency you can get from a windmill and things of this nature. But it's primary set toward the horizontal windmills. Uh, vertical windmills, which is what I'm going with, means my axle is uh, this way, and, or this way, which is what you say it. Uh, and mine turns like a merry-go-round would turn. And this, uh, I was watching a, a, some stuff on YouTube, and it's uh, some of the things that's out there would give you the impression that vertical windmills really have their problems. And I agree with the person, major problems. There's a reason why the horizontal windmills have dominated the market ever since windmills exist, including back in the Dutch days when they had the ones with several fins on them that went around and around several blades, uh, horizontal windmills also, you saw very, very few vertical windmills of any kind from anyone unless they put them in a turbine format. And uh, that wasn't really known. The windmills that we see vertical today, I have not saw any that I would say is a viable product. Uh, again, I'm not a big connoisseur of things. I try not to look at anything anybody else is doing when I'm inventing because it, it causes me to get off focus. It causes me to think like them. And so I don't research what other people's doing or how to do it or anything else. I clearly have to come up with everything within my own, which makes me question everything. Or how do you do that? Or how do you get around that? And I find for myself that works much, much better than someone giving me, well, here's how so-and-so do it. How can we do it better? And it just that doesn't work for me. So I don't have in-depth knowledge. My cursory knowledge, though, is such that uh, I'm of the belief that they're pretty much a joke. <laughs>